Okay, this is a review for chapter six. This is for test five or unit five. This, uh, this unit deals with solving systems of equations using matrices. Question one is from uh, actually section 6.4, but uh, it wants us to write this matrix equation as uh, a system of equations, but we don't have to solve the system of equations. So the top row here represents coefficients, uh, and this matrix here contains the variables for those coefficients. So one pairs up with x, four pairs up with y, negative three would pair up with z when multiplied. So the resulting system of equations is one x or x plus four y minus three z equals negative 21, and so on, negative five x minus three y. Now I'm using these s coefficients plus z equals 20. Now we use these, that row for coefficients, 8x plus y plus 5z equals negative 13. Question 2 is from 6.1 that just wants uh, to practice row operations. So, and since these row operations are affecting different rows. I'm going to go ahead and do them uh, at the same time. So negative 3 times row 1 plus row 2 is going to become my new row 2. And then 2 times row 1 plus row 3 is going to become row 3. So I'm going to start with this top series of row operations which is affecting row 2. So everything in row 1 is going to be multiplied by negative 3. And then you get, we're going to combine that with row 2. So here we have negative 3 plus negative 1, which is negative 4. Here we're going to have positive 12 minus 6, which is 6. Here we're going to have negative 9 minus 6, is negative 15, and for that number we're going to have positive 21 plus 8 is 29. So for the next series of row operations, <clears throat> now row 1 is going to be multiplied by 2, so everything in row 1 would be multiplied by 2, and then we're going to combine that with <clears throat> the entries in row 3. So here we're going to have 2 minus 7. Here we're going to have negative 8 plus negative 5. There we're going to have 6 plus 6. And here we're going to have negative 14 plus 8. And uh, that series of operations only affects row 2 and 3, so row 1 is going to stay the same. Okay, question 3 is from also 6.1, and one of the major topics of chapter 6, which is solve a system of equations using Gaussian elimination. So that's where we create a system of equations uh, or create a matrix, augmented matrix, and perform row operations to reduce the matrix to row echelon form. So the first step is going to be create the augmented matrix. Now, um, along this, or down that first column, remember we want to get that first column to be 1, 0, and 0. So we already have 1, 0. We just need to get that right there to be a 0. So what I'm going to do is multiply row 1 by negative 1. And then I'm going to add that to row 3. 
and that's going to become a new row 3. So everything in row 1 is going to be multiplied by negative 1, then I'm going to combine that with row 3. So I'm going to get 0, 3. So right here we're going to get a 2 plus 1. Here we're going to get negative 1 plus 3, which is 2. And here we're going to get negative 1 plus 8 which is 7. <clears throat> so we've got 1, 0, 0 there, which we, which we want. And then after that's done, we look at this part of the matrix, and that's supposed to be 1, 0. So I need to get rid of that 3. So now I'm going to take row 2. Oops, row 2. Multiply it by negative 3. Add that to row 3 to make a new row 3. So I'm going to have 0, 0. This entry here, if I multiply it by negative 3, that's going to become negative 6. Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. Here, if I multiply it by negative 3, and I have negative 15, negative 15 plus 7 is negative 8. Now this matrix is technically not row echelon form, but because of this bottom row, um, I can stop using matrices and start to transfer back into the system of equations. That bottom row represents the equation negative 4z equals negative 8, so z equals 2. This row, that middle row, represents the equation y plus 2z equals 5, and I know that z equals 2, so this is y plus 4 equals 5, so y equals 1. And that row represents the equation x minus 2y plus z equals 1. And I know that y equals 1, so this is x minus 2. And I know that z equals 2, so that's another plus 2. And then the negative 2 and the plus 2 cancels, so x equals 1. So my solution is 1, 1. Here's another question from 6.1 using Gaussian elimination to solve a system of equations, so it's going to be much like question 3. Start with the augmented matrix. So again, right along here, I want to get 1, 0, 0. So I'm going to multiply row 1. I'm going to multiply it by negative 2. Add that to row 2 to form a new row 2. I'm also going to do the exact same thing, but add it to row 3 and create a new row 3. So starting here, if I multiply, whoops not row 2, I'm going to multiply row 1. And then if I add that to row 2, I'm going to get 0. And then here I'm going to get 2 plus 1, which is 3. Here I'm going to get negative 10 plus 4, which is negative 6. And here I'm going to get 4 plus 2, which is 6. Now when I combine this with row 3, I'm going to get 0. And there I'm going to get 2 plus 4, which is 6. Here I'm going to get negative 10 minus 2, which is negative 12. And here I'm going to get 4 plus 8, which is 12. So now here, remember, I want to get a 1 and a 0. 
So that three, this three right here should be a one. So what I'm gonna do is multiply row two by one third. Now it's gonna become a new row two. Everything else is gonna stay the same. So, need more space. So now I need to get that entry to be a zero. So, I'm gonna take row two, multiply it by negative six, Add that to row three to make a new row three. So I'm going to get zero, zero. If I multiply that by negative six, I'm gonna get positive 12. So positive 12 minus 12 is zero. If I multiply this by negative six, I'm gonna get negative 12 plus 12 is zero. So this question, <coughs> excuse me, this question is actually from 6.2. 6.2 was Gaussian elimination, but using systems that were dependent or inconsistent. Dependent, remember, means infinitely many solutions. Inconsistent means no solution. So a row of all zeros at the bottom is an indication of infinitely many solutions. So the way, uh, back in unit four, when we saw this, we have to parameterize the solution. So I'm gonna let Z equal T, and then this row is the equation Y minus two Z equals two, but if we let Z equal T, that becomes Y minus two T equals 2, and then if I add the 2t over, I get y equals 2t plus 2. So now I need the x, that top row, let's see, that should be, <laughs> that should be a 1, I don't know why I wrote a 0, that should be a 1, and that should be a 1. <coughs> So that top row represents the equation x minus y plus 5t equals negative 2. So making the substitutions, we have x minus 2t plus 2 plus 5t equals negative 2. So x minus 2t minus 2 so combining the t we have x plus 3t and if I add the 2 that's going to equal 0 so x equals negative 3t <coughs> excuse me so we have our three values, x was 3t, y was 2t plus 2, and z was t. Alright. Question 5, it's from 6.3, operations of matrices, adding, subtracting, multiplying. So we're uh, going to multiply these two matrices together. First thing to check, though, is if the matrix multiplication is possible. So what we learned in class is you have to look at the size of the matrix. This one has, so matrix A has two rows, three columns. Matrix B has three rows, 
two columns, these inner dimensions have to be exactly the same in order for the matrix multiplication to work. And the outer dimension tell us that the result of A times B is going to be a 2 by 2 matrix. So we're going to be able to proceed. So the resulting matrix, like I said, is going to be a 2 by 2. So it's going to have two rows, two columns. So this entry right here is in row 1, column 1. So remember what we talked about in class. You take row 1. Right, column one and combine using addition and multiplication so um, you move across the row and down the column so three times negative one is negative three and then negative eight times eight is negative sixty four and then negative five times negative seven is 35. <clears throat> and we'll proceed like that with the rest of them. <clears throat> so uh, this entry right here is row one, column two. So I'm gonna need row one and column two. So we're gonna go across the row and down the column. So three times 10 is 30. Negative eight times three is negative 24. And negative five times seven is negative 35. All right, this entry here is in row two, column one, so I need row two and I need column one. Remember, go across the row, down the column. So six times negative one is negative six. And then six times eight, is 48, and seven times negative seven is negative 49. And this last entry here is row two, column two. So I need row two, now I need column two. So six times 10 is 60, six times three is 18, and seven times seven is 49. <clears throat> now we just combine and add all of those numbers. So the first entry we got negative 3 plus negative 64 plus 35. So that's negative 32. Row 1, column 2, we have 6 minus 35 is negative 29. Let's see, row 2, column 1, we have 42 minus 49, which is negative 7. And then row 2, column 2, we have 78 plus 49 is 127. Okay, question six, more, uh, more stuff from 6.3, matrix operations. <clears throat> Adding and subtracting matrices is only possible if the matrices are the same size. 
So for part A, I've written not possible because matrix D and matrix B can't be subtracted. They're not the same size. For part B, this matrix here is 2 times B. I just took every entry in matrix B multiplied it by 2. This matrix here is matrix A multiplied by 3. I just took every entry in matrix A multiplied by 3. And then you uh, subtract corresponding entries. This entry subtracts with that entry. So 0 minus negative 3 would be 3. This entry subtracts with that entry and so on. Corresponding entries just subtract. So 4 minus 9 is negative 5. 2 minus 0 is 2. And then here 6 minus 6 is 0. Uh, 4 minus, negative 4 minus 12 is negative 16, and 8 minus 3 is 5. For part C, 1 fifth times matrix C, just take every entry in matrix C and multiply it by 1 fifth, which is what I've done here for part C. And then part D is also not possible because matrix C and matrix A are not the same size. Question seven is from section 6.4 of uh, matrix algebra and finding inverses of matrices. Um, to find the inverse of a matrix, it's gotta be a square matrix, and here matrix A is a square matrix. And then to find the inverse of a two by two, we use this formula here. Uh, one over AD minus BC. And then A and D, you can see here A and D switch spots. And then B and C stay in the same place, but they change sign. So <clears throat> here I've got one over, and then A times D is six, and then minus one times negative one, so that becomes six minus negative one. And then I switch the place of those two entries. And then these don't switch places, they actually change signs. So that becomes a positive one, that becomes a negative one in my inverse. So then I have 1 7th times that matrix. Now you can multiply the 1 7th into the matrix or you can leave it out. Um, it's up to you. Now question 8 is also from 6.4, finding the inverse of a matrix this time is 3 by 3. A um, little more involved. It involves most of the technique that we learned in section 6.1, uh, reducing a, a matrix to uh, row echelon form. So, What needs to happen is this matrix A and then on the other side of this line we write the identity matrix for a 3 by 3. And then we do row operations to transform this side of the matrix to look like this side of the matrix. So we need to transform it into the identity matrix using row operations, similar to what we would have done in section 6.1. So this first row needs to be 1, 0, 0. So I'm going to multiply row 1 by negative 2 and add it to row 2. I'm also going to do the same thing and add it to row 3. So for row two, I'm going to get zero, uh, zero. And then negative six plus five is negative one. Yes, I, and now we've got to go across the whole, the whole row. So also got to do the same thing. If 
that whole thing is multiplied by negative 2, then I get, right here, I get a negative 2 plus 0, which is negative 2. And then 0 plus 1 is 1, and 0 plus 0 is 0. I can do the same thing for row 3. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Negative 4 plus 5 is 1. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0. And then negative 2 plus 0 is so negative 2. Now I'm on this column here, 0 plus 0 is 0. Now for that column there, 0 plus 1 is 1. Top row stays the same. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and swap row 2 and 3. So swap row 2 and row three. Okay. Start that one over. And then I'm also going to multiply row three. I'm going to multiply row three by negative one. Okay, so this entry right here, that two, that needs to be a zero. So I'm gonna use the one below it, this one right here, I'm gonna multiply that by negative two and add. So I need to take row two and multiply it by negative two. And add that to row one. That's gonna make a new row one. So everything in row two is gonna be multiplied by negative two. Okay, so negative two times row two here makes zero. Zero plus one is one. Negative two times one is negative two. Negative two plus two is zero. Here we're gonna have zero plus three. Here we're going to have negative 2 times negative, that's 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. Here we're going to have 0 plus 0. And here we're going to have negative 2 plus 0, which is negative 2. Best thing is to get that to be a zero right there. So I'm gonna use the one below it and multiply by the negative, or the opposite of three, which is negative three. So row three, I'm gonna multiply by negative three, add it to row one to make a new row one. So that's gonna be zero plus one. Which is one. Zero plus zero, which is zero. And then negative three plus three, which is zero. The 
this is going to be negative 6 plus 5 which is negative 1. This is going to be 4 plus, or sorry, this is going to be 3 plus 0. And then this is going to be 0 plus negative 2. Since we now have reduced row echelon form on that left side, whatever we have on the right side becomes the inverse. So the inverse of A is negative 1, 3, negative 2, negative 2, 0, 1, 2, negative 1. Zero. Okay. Question nine is from section six point four. Solving a system of equations using matrix algebra, or we could call that matrix equations. So what we need to do is first write the system of equations um, in matrix equations. So we would have our coefficient matrix and then a matrix of our variables. And then a matrix containing those numbers at the end, negative 1 and 12. Now, remember what we're solving for are the variables x and y, so we need to cancel that matrix on the left side, or reduce it to 1, and the way that we do that is multiplying by the inverse. If we have a x equals a b, what we need to do is multiply over here by the inverse and multiply over here by the inverse. So the inverse of A is 1 over the product of those two numbers, which is 6, minus the product of those numbers, which is negative 1. And then these numbers again switch places. And these numbers change sign. So this is going to become a positive one, negative one. So that's our inverse. And according to that, remember what happens when you multiply a matrix by its inverse is the matrix reduces to 1. So what we need to figure out then is the inverse times B. So this needs to be multiplied. So we need to figure out what this product is. So if we have a 2 by 2 being multiplied by a 2 by 1, we're going to get a 2 by 1. So what we're going to do first is multiply these two matrices and then at the end multiply the 1 7 into that matrix. So I'm going to leave the 1 7 out here. This first entry, row 1, column 1. So I need row 1, column 1. I'm going to get 2 plus 12. For this entry down here, I need row 2, column 1. So that's going to give me 1, and then minus 36. And 
if you multiply the 1 7 into that, 1 7 to 14 is 2, 1 7 to negative 35 is negative 5. So we get x equals 2, y equals negative 5. Now number 10, it's also from section 6.4, a little bit bigger scale of matrix equations. Nice thing though is that if, uh, we've already been provided the inverse of A, we don't have to find it. Just finding the inverse of a 3x3 three three matrix uh, can be challenging for sure. So we still need to set up though the matrix equations. Again, we have a matrix A multiplied by a matrix X equals a matrix B. So, as with the last problem, we're going to multiply here by the inverse of A because that's going to reduce that matrix to the identity matrix. But we would also have to multiply over here. So, our variables. are going to equal the inverse of A times B. So again, this is what we really need to find. I don't need to show that the inverse of A times A is equal to the identity. That's something we already know. So I need to find the inverse of A times B. So the inverse of A times B Here's the inverse of A. This needs to be multiplied by B. So if we have a 3 by 3 and a 3 by 1, that's going to result in a 3 by 1. And I'm going to keep this 1 half on the outside, multiply it in at the end. So this first entry is row one, column one. So I'm going to have zero plus six plus eight. This next entry is now row two, column one. That's going to give me zero plus four plus four. This last entry is row three, column one. It's gonna give me zero plus two plus four. And then if you multiply one half into there, we get seven. Four, three. So what we get from that is that x equals seven, y equals four, and z equals three. Okay, question 11. <clears throat> These next couple questions are from section 6.5, determinants and Kramer's rule. So we'll evaluate the determinant of a two by two matrix. The uh, formula is AD minus BC. So that's AD right there. That's gonna be 25 minus, so then that's B and C, so that's B to 21, so that's 46. 
Okay, now uh, the process for evaluating a 3x3 determinant is quite different. Um, you need to choose a row or a column, and it could be any row or any column. It's easier if you choose a row or a column that contains zero. So, uh, for example, that top row contains a, a zero. So, uh, what happens now is you uh, choose cofactors and minor matrix minor matrices. So, if I take the first number eight and cross out the row and the column, then the minor matrix left over is one, three, five, nine. Now if I take the negative one and cross out the row and column, Then the minor matrix left over is 3, 8, 3, 9. Now if I take 0 and cross out the row and the column, and the minor left over is 3, 1, 8, 5. Now, we've also got to remember the pattern. So, according, because because I chose that top row, I've got a minus and plus. So that's what it says to do here, subtract and then add. So, 8. And then we're going to have 9 minus 15 plus 1, and then 27 minus 24, and then 0 times 15 minus 8. So that's just going to be 0. That's 8 times negative 6. One times three. So the determinant is negative forty-five. Okay. Finally, questions fourteen and fifteen. Kramer's rule. These are also from sex, section uh, six point five. This is another way to solve system of equations. So uh, Kramer's rule involves finding a bunch of determinants with uh, two equations and two variables we need to find a d determinant a d sub x determinant and d sub y so the d determinant is a determinant of just the coefficients of the variables The d sub x determinant, the subscript of x means that my x column is going to be replaced. So instead of negative 3 and negative 1, we're going to use negative 1 and 12 in the x column. So this determinant. Now for d sub y, the y subscript means that the y column is replaced with those numbers. So negative 1 and 12. The x column stays the same as it originally was with its coefficients. So this determinant negative 35. Now, the other part of Kramer's rule is your variables are going to be d sub x divided by d. 
which is 14 divided by 7, so x equals 2. And then y, similarly, is d sub y divided by d, so it's going to be negative 35 divided by 7, which is negative 5. Okay, Kramer's rule to solve a three equation, three variables. Pretty similar to the last question. We need to find um, a d determinant, and then a d sub x, and then a d sub y, and a d sub z. So a little, a little bit more involved. So the d determinant, it's just the coefficients. And I'm going to expand across that top row. And then since this is zero, that one's just going to cancel to zero. So what I'm doing here is just finding the determinants of these smaller matrices. So here we're going to have 2 times negative 13, that's negative 26. And then it's going to be minus 10. So that's negative 36. D sub x. The x column is going to be replaced with 14, 0, negative 2. The y column is the same. The z column is the same. So I'm going to uh, expand. I'm going to do the top row again. So that's going to be 14, then And then minus zero, and that one doesn't matter because it's zero. And then let that negative one. So this is 14. And this is going to be zero minus negative. A zero minus two, rather. So this is 14 times negative 13. That's negative 182 plus two. It's negative 180. Okay, d sub y. Now the y column takes on these values, 14, 0, negative 2. The x column is the same as it originally was, and the z column is the same as it originally was. So I'm going to choose uh, this middle row. And that middle row is minus plus minus. So it actually has to be negative 3. And then if I cross out the row and column there, I'm up to 14, negative 1, negative 2, and 3. And I add 0 times that determinant, and that's just zero. Then I subtract, and if I cross out the row and column with the five, I've got two, 14, and four, negative two. 
Negative 3 times 40 is negative 120. And then negative 4 minus 56. That's uh, negative 60 times negative 5. That's 300. positive 180. Finally, B sub Z. Now the Z column takes on those values of 14, 0, negative 2. X column is the same. Y column reverse back to what it originally was. Now uh, I'm going to go back up and expand on that top row. And that top row is plus minus plus. So that's going to be 2. And then minus 0. Which is 0. Then plus 14. Then here we're going to have two times two minus zero, and here we're going to have fourteen times six minus negative four. So this is four plus fourteen <coughs> times ten. 140 is 144. So x is d sub x divided by d. So negative 180 divided by negative 36 is 5 y is d sub y divided by d. And that's positive 180 divided by negative 36. And that's negative 5. And z is d sub z divided by d. That's positive 144 divided by negative 36. That equals negative 4. So, solution is x equals 5, y equals negative 5, and z equals negative 4.